What's up, guys? Uh, it's time for the official review of NASCAR Heat Evolution. And as I promised before, I, 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 I wanted to wait about a week before I did the review. I wanted to give it every possible opportunity that I could to really see everything the game has to offer before I made any final judgment on the game. And as always, I'm keeping it low tech. I made a quick little list here of all my main talking points. I'm going to try to be thorough and I want to make sure that I don't leave anything that I think is important about the game out of the review. Um, I'm pretty sure by now most of you have gone online, you've seen other people's thoughts on the game, you've seen reviews, and for the most part it's been brutal. And I'm not really surprised if you saw my last video, I was talking about what to expect from this game. And as it turned out, for the most part, I think I pretty much nailed it. Uh, I'm not acting like I know everything or that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but I pay attention. I see what's in front of me and I try to take it for what it is. I don't let my wishful thinking get the best of me. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not perfect. Sometimes that might still creep in there, but I was trying to be objective and I really, I really felt a certain way about the game and I, I said that this game was going to be uh, unfinished it was going to have that feel of just you know it wasn't it wasn't going to feel like a, a complete game I didn't I didn't think it was going to have a lot to offer that being said I did also see some promise in the game and some things that I saw from the early gameplay that gave me some hope as well so let's move on from that let's get to to the main gist of it most people are bashing the game and they're saying it's the worst game ever some people have actually said it's worse than you technics i don't agree with that so let's start off by talking about the game's graphics uh, a lot of people are saying that it's awful that it's the worst possible graphics uh you know i've heard all kinds of things some people thought it's okay personally i think the graphics are not bad i don't i don't have a problem with the graphics are they mind-blowing are they next gen no so once you get past that point it's not something that that's going to blow you away it's more than adequate. The game does not look bad. In fact, that hideous sun glare that was on the car, I don't notice it. Now, I don't know if DMR actually toned it down, or maybe it's just that the game looks better in person and not watching it off of YouTube clips. I'm not sure which one, but I don't notice that awful sun glare that was on the cars earlier. So even the cars look pretty good. Overall, the graphics, I have to say, are above average, but not mind-blown. They're not next-gen, what I would consider next-gen graphics, but they are pretty solid last-gen graphics. Could they be better? Absolutely. But I have no complaints about the graphics. I really don't know where or why people feel these graphics are so horrible they're not that bad in my opinion so graphics wise I think they did a decent job however there are certain issues visually that are more technical so even though the graphics overall are not bad there is an issue that sticks out and is very noticeable and it's I believe it's called aliasing I'm not an expert, maybe somebody can correct me, but the aliasing in this game is over the top horrendous. It's really noticeable. And what I what I what I'm thinking is aliasing is these jagged edges and they're everywhere. 
they're really noticeable. So the, the edges are what I, they're not smooth, they're very jagged, and I guess that's what aliasing is, and this, this game has it in spades. Now I'm playing this game on a PS4 console, I'm sure that people on a PC can set it to a higher setting, they can put anti-aliasing on and it'll smooth it out, so it may not be an issue on PC, but on consoles, or at least on the PS4, I noticed it. So that needs to be fixed in the future. Also, the other thing visually, I'm not sure it's really a graphics thing or is or it's something else, but the pop-in is also pretty bad. You can notice, especially in some tracks more than others, as you're driving, you can actually actually see the fence being built as you're driving, right in front of you. Uh, I'm saying it's being built, but what I mean is it's popping up right in front of you, even in the shadow on, on the on the track itself, the shadows it's being built there too it's like just popping up it's right in front of you and it's I think that's a pretty unacceptable especially for a next-gen console uh, this game doesn't have a lot that's actually happening real-time so I don't understand it's not like you're asking the, the, the computer or the hardware to work extra hard rendering this stuff in real time. There's not a lot happening. You have the individual track, you know, it's not like the crowd is moving, waving, jumping, screaming. It's just a static, everything, the entire environment is static. It's just still. So there's nothing that requires the, the hardware to do co extra computing to make it render in real time. So I don't understand why there's so much popping issues, the aliasing, and also I notice a drop in frame rate. I would not, you know, I can expect that in games that have a lot of things happening at once, and then you see a drop in frame rate. All you have in this game, like I said, the, the majority of everything is static, and the cars you got 40 cars, 39 including you. That's the only thing that's actually moving in real time. So, if anything, this game should be moving super smooth. It should be running smoothly, and it should be running at 60 frames, on a, even on a console. Okay? It's not the type of game that I would think would be demanding on the hardware that way. So, I notice frame rate drops, the aliasing, and the pop-in. Those things are they're pretty bad and noticeable but the graphics itself I got no problem with the graphics the game looks good visually for the most part so um like I said I got a list here so graphics I say they're pretty decent I got no problem with that okay and the other thing I'm gonna talk about that is surprisingly good is the AI the AI is not perfect, there are issues, but for the most part, the AI, it's the, in my opinion, it's the best AI of all console NASCAR games, okay, on consoles. I don't remember a better AI. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Are there issues? Yes, there are some major issues with the AI, which I will get into later, but right now, I think the best thing about this game, if I had to pick one thing that sticks out above anything else on a positive side, it's the AI. And it provides really good racing under the right conditions, okay? There are many issues with this game, I know a lot of bad things about it, but under the right conditions, the AI works for the most part it provides very good racing if you got it set on a hard level it actually does learn and it and it, it gets uh, brings up the difficulty level depending how you drive and the way it works is you know you run at the track and it takes you know I guess it, your speed 
how many cars you pass, how easily you pass them, where you finish, and it gives you a speed rating. Now, you're not going to notice a change in the AI during that race. You notice it the next time you come back to that race because each track is individually rated to how you run it. Now, in my, from what I saw, okay, from, from all the racing I did, I ran every track uh, several times. So the first time I ran it, I brought, you know, I got a certain speed rating. It went up. The next time I went to the track, I did notice the AI was faster and tougher, but I was still able to bring the rating up again. So by the third time I got around to the same track, the AI was tough. They raced me hard. Um, they at at times there were issues, but for the most part they raced clean. They spread out. Um, and that's where this game to me is at its best. Um. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna mention something. And it's going to get into, see, I'm, I'm, I don't want to lose my, my frame of thought. But the thing that most people are, are, are upset about, and I agree with them, is that the simulation mode of this game is not really simulation. This game is more is built to be really arcade-ish, and then simulated, the, the simulation side is supposed to be a lot tougher and stuff, and it is tough, but for the wrong reasons not in a good way so the AI provides you with really good fun competitive racing but only under certain conditions now if you race this game under simulator in many cases the AI sometimes will ram into you the self the self-awareness of the AI is is not good if you slow down for any reason or you make a mistake and they're behind you they don't slow down they don't check up and they keep ramming forward and if you slow down and they're coming at you 30 miles an hour faster they don't try to slow down they don't even try to evade you they just ram into you from behind so you got problems if you have to check up for some reason or you you scrape against the wall and it slows your car down look out because this ai doesn't have any it might have a little awareness it's just really not that good so that's one real big negative about the ai that has to be addressed if not in this game in the future um the other thing when you're running side by side Sometimes they could be a little over aggressive. If you're on the outside, they'll just move up and they'll slam into your side. If you're underneath, if you're trying to uh, run the bottom into the corner and they're on your outside, sometimes they'll slam down into you and they'll knock you into the apron. And this is where the problem is on simulator. If you're whether you're the outside or the inside. The AI will have a tendency to hit you and they will they'll they they're gonna win every time because they're tanks. That's the other issue with this with these with the AI. They're immovable objects. And if they slam into you on the side, whether they're under you or above you, you're gonna spin out, you're gonna wreck, whatever the case may be, uh, it's bad news. And it's hard to control the car when they hit you on simulator. It's The car is hard to control, but it's not because it's a realistic, the physics are realistic. It's because it, it's an attempt to make the, the physics more difficult, but the car just ends up feeling like you're skating on ice. It's over the top, and there's no way you're going to save that car once you hit the apron. And at times you hit the wall and there's this other wonky thing that happens. The car just like a pinball machine. It just spins around. You run, crash into other cars. Doesn't make a lot of sense physics wise. And once you wreck in this game or you spin out, that's where you notice the other big issue. There's no, the cautions, the caution system is absolutely broken. 
it is a joke, doesn't work right, and it's something that it, it falls into the category of game-breaking issue. It's that serious, and it will ruin a race, and that's another negative. As I said, the AI will race well, but you have to be in under certain conditions. I found out later because as I was running the career mode, I did the first half of a season, or more, almost the first half, under simulator. And it's a little, you know, tougher and stuff. And in most tracks, you'll have a decent time until you get wrecked or something, or until you reach Martinsville or road course. And that's where I found out how bad the simulator, simulator mode is. It's impossible to drive, I mean, at, at speed to do laps at Martinsville without spinning out. If you touch the curb, you are going to spin out. You're going to get run over by the AI in behind you. If you're on the outside, it's just tough. It's tough going all around. It's hard to control at Martinsville. It's, you know, it's too short of a track and the turns are way too tight to control it at speed under simulator. And then I went to Sonoma. I could not complete a lap without spinning out or wrecking or going way deep into the grass on simulator. And it, it became so bad and I, I had to reset the race so many times that I just at one point got so frustrated I was going to give up, and this is what I think a lot of people who, who really destroyed this game, I, I and I understand, I'm not coming down on them for it, but because I totally get it. You find yourself resetting these races so many times because you get crushed, and then there's no, the, the caution doesn't come out, and that's where you get the most angry because nothing's working, and then you're like, this fucking game's a mess. I'm just gonna get rid of it. it I, you, right away you start remembering your techniques, and it's bad news. So I can understand why people at that point just want to give up. But at that point, I realized I'm not gonna be able to even run laps. It's just gonna be a mess. I'm tired of resetting it. Let me just put this thing on, on arcade. This, this game is clearly more designed to run arcade. It's an arc, more of an arcade -y type game. Let me just, I'll give in and I'll fucking run it on that. And what I found was the racing, I, I thought it was going to be too easy. I thought it wasn't going to feel at all challenging or realistic. And I'm not saying it felt realistic. But it wasn't as unrealistic as I was expecting. Because the AI was, it's, it, I had it on the hardest level. I still hadn't really, you know, raced those tracks. But still the AI was really hard and competitive. But yet, I could control the car because it was on arcade. So I could now race hard against the AI make passes and it was still difficult to make passes but I could I could stay on course and if I kind of got off over the curb whatever I didn't lose the car completely so you still had to fight the wheel and it was competitive and it was fun and I was surprised and I and then the same thing at Martinsville I'm like wow I can really drive I can make some passes on the outside really hard to do but and then on the inside and I still hadn't really elevated this track to a little bit of a harder level but I had the the AI set on on hard so suddenly I'm like this is not as bad as I thought I'm having a good fucking time so what I found out was if you put it on arcade but you make the AI at the hard setting and you take the time, this is key, you have to take the time to run every track several times. And it's tedious, 
and it's going to be kind of boring because there's no challenge. But if you do each track at least twice, you'll get the AI will, it will get harder to the point where you're fighting for 25th. And that's awesome. And I'm talking, and then you, ha of course, you can't run these short little sprint races. You got to bring it up. I put it up to 7%. You could put it to more because the restarts are a little hairy, but if, you, if you're if you on arcade, you can kind of handle it. If the car, if the AI gets into you, it's not going to spin you out. You're not going to lose total control. You can kind of beat and bang a little bit and hold on. And if you do a few laps, the cars start to spread out. And that's where the game really comes to life. Of course, the, there's still some huge issues there. The caution system being broken. But just looking at it from a standpoint of running long green flag runs, it it's fun. I could even say it's a blast for that in under that condition. So you have to get over the okay the you know simulator aspect of it's not realistic. The physics they're kind of wonky. They're not really as good as you would like them to be. But AI, the the a the AI, it races really good. It's the best AI I've seen on any console, and they do have issues. As I said, they're tanks. You can't do a bump and run. You could slam into them from behind. You're not going to move them. So when they tend to want to run the bottom of the track, so if you want to pass them on the inside, you can't do the classic bump and run. That's a huge issue. DMR has to fix that because if these cars, if the AI remains a tank, the only, the majority of the passing, you're going to have to do it on the outside. So you're kind of taking options away from, from the player. And it's, it, you know, the bump and run is a classic move for racing in general, especially stock car racing. I'm not saying slam into them, but you should, if you got the inside position or you're coming in and you're, and you, you're faster than the AI, you should be able to tap them and the bumper and they should get a little squirrely and then have to check up a little bit. That's what happens. And then you go take the inside and you make your pass. So that part of it, not being able to really do that, that's a problem. But overall, as I found a lot of enjoyment. So even though overall the game has so many big issues that I'm still going to get into, but there is fun to be had if you take the time to, one, get that AI to that difficulty to, to match your skill level. That actually works. But you have to take the time to run every track. You know, oh, uh, you know. Of course, you gotta. You don't get all access to all the tracks early on, but you gotta race the the initial tracks. It opens up the other tracks. It's not that big a deal, but you gotta invest time. So you gotta have a little patience, and you gotta invest that into the game. It rewards you in the sense that the AI gets better, and it becomes really challenging. And it will provide you with pretty decent length green flag runs where you're fighting for each and every spot. And there are times you make a pass, and in two laps, the guy you passed, he's passing you again. So they don't give up. They don't just fall back, and then once you pass them, you, you just you leave them in the dust. And you got to focus on every lap, even on arcade mode. So arcade mode is not as bad as people as you would think. And I learned that because the simulator part of it is so messed up that I was like, fuck it. Let me just put this thing on arcade. Let me see what happens. And the, the game actually shines under arcade mode, in my opinion. Now, to those of you who are super, super hardcore simulator guys, you know what? This is not the game for you. And it's never going to be. Uh, console games, I just, you know, it is what it is. Um, you're, the only place you're going to get a super your simulator, you know, experience is iRacing, unfortunately. But 
I'm here to tell you that if you give this game a chance, you're going to be surprised at how good the arcade setting is. As long as the AI's difficulty level is up, and as long as you put the time in to get every track rating, get it up. Once you do that, and it might take a day, it might take two days of, of just putting the time into the game. I'm, I'm telling you, it will surprise you how much fun the racing is. So I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed the racing. And I, just that green, those green flag runs were more enjoyable to me than any console NASCAR game I've ever played. That's how good the AI can be at times under the right conditions once they spread out. They're challenging, they, they race you hard, and for the most part, clean. So, those are the, the silver linings of the game. I think the game has potential, and I've always said that the most important thing about any NASCAR or any racing game is the AI. you got to nail that. If you can nail the AI, yes, physics, handling, those things are important. But it's not as important as the AI because even if the car doesn't handle it the way you'd like or feel natural or realistic, if the AI is competitive and you still have to fight to make passes, but it can still be enjoyable. Think about sh just racing a bunch of shopping carts. Yeah, shopping carts, they handle terrible. It's not the ideal vehicle you want to push, you know, you don't want to race a bunch of shopping carts. But if everybody's even and you're racing shopping carts as well, you forget that the, how shitty the handling is. You just focused on the actual racing against the AI and it becomes fun. So I think a big part of the reason that maybe a lot of people are not understanding that there is enjoyment to be had in this game and that there is some really good things about it is because they probably gave up the moment they realized that the simulator mode is not what they wanted it to be. So that's enough about that. Um, the graphics I think are fine and the AI is surprisingly good and it can provide some really good green flag racing under those conditions. Put it, put it on arcade and just forget about the simulator and make sure you put enough laps because short racing is not gonna it's not gonna bring that out of it. Do at least seven percent and up. So um, let's see. Moving on from that graphics AI online online multiplayer. There's some big problems with it, but I'm going to have to defend DMR on this. In from what I've seen, I didn't spend too much time on it, but I spent like half a day on it just trying to, you know, do as many races as I could, trying to find, you know, as many people as I could on lobbies. My experience has been that it actually it runs smoothly. It works. DMR gave you what they promised as far as a server and being able to have a lot of people running together smoothly. Other people have reported certain issues, maybe being disconnected, other things like that. I can't really speak to that. I'm not really into online racing and I'm going to tell you why. But as I said, I think DMR did their part. They made an online that works. It runs pretty smooth compared to all, any of the Eutechnics ones. And I don't know if you can run 40 because I haven't seen 40 in a lobby. You know, maybe there's just not enough people on trying to play it, whatever. I don't know how many people have actually purchased the game and tried online. But online is what it is and it, this is what I'm always saying this is why I am really more into the offline career mode online racing is never going this one no matter how good a developer 
makes an online system run, there's no fix for the things people do. We're human. Either you don't know how to race and you just wreck people because you just you suck, or you purposely wreck people because you you like to troll people, or I think a lot of people fall into this category. I can understand, almost understand it. I'm not excusing it, but what I noticed in most of the races I was in, people started off and everything seemed to go like we're all trying to race clean until you hit the first turn. The guys that are up front, they immediately want to block everyone because they're deathly afraid of letting you pass. Nobody wants to let anyone pass. I've seen a lot of races where right away the guy in front of you starts doing this trying to block everything insane insane like you I can't let anyone pass me or it's over it's it's ridiculous so you can pretty much know where that's gonna lead then eventually what always happens is there's a wreck because online racing is a mixed bag you don't know what you're getting offline the AI at least is designed to run like their real life counterparts. They're designed to maintain positions at least till they feel they can pass. That's oh, it's more organized, and you're never gonna get a realistic NASCAR feel online. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. It's an it's not gonna happen. That's my opinion on it. The only way is if you find a group of people that are your fr your friends and you lock yourselves in a lobby and you all trust each other and you and you try. The way this game is set up, there's no cautions, and and this adds to the problem because the minute somebody wrecks or spins out, there's no caution. The first thing, first of all, the smoke effect in this game is way overdone. I would rather have no smoke than the way it's done in this game. It's ridiculous. It completely blinds you. The entire screen is filled with smoke. Now I drive all my races in cockpit mode. I don't do this behind the driver thing. I try to get as immersed into the game as possible. Um, I like the fantasy of it. So I don't... Driving with from, from the view behind the car or above the hood, not realistic to me. It just takes you out from any immersion. It just reminds you that it's it's a game. In cockpit mode, at least you're kind of you're in that mindset. This is how it looks when you're actually driving the car, and this is the way I want to keep it. So if you're in cockpit mode, the smoke effects are even worse because you really can't see anything so if you spin out or you get wrecked you don't you end up you don't know if you're in the apron you don't know if you're right up against the wall you don't even know if you're facing the right direction on the track and usually you try to accelerate and as soon as you do that you spin out if you're on simulator especially so you, you create more smoke it's just a mess so that happens and there's no caution so you can imagine you're gonna be almost a lap down or at least or or a lap down so now because there's no caution you have no chance of winning this race so what happens you get pissed off that someone wrecked you you know you have no chance of of, of winning because the, the there's no reset the, the caution is your re supposed to be a reset, right? When there's a caution, the field set resets, and you get another shot. No caution means now you're almost down a lap. You're way behind everyone. You just got wrecked, so now you're pissed. So what's going to be the first thought in your head? I'm going to fucking wreck everybody. Fuck this. I can't win, and I got wrecked. Fuck these guys. You start driving backwards, and that's what happens every race. That's the nature of online racing. So, I don't want to, I feel like I, I wasted half my day. I did it because I wanted to know what it was like in this game. And I wanted to talk about it. You know, 
I'm doing a review here. I'm trying to be as in-depth as possible. And I couldn't do a review and not say, I don't, well, I didn't even try the online. So I don't know what to say about it. So I put the time in to get a feel of it. And that's what it is. So this is why I'm not really into online racing. And I don't think I ever will be. Once in a while, yeah, I'll try it. Once in a blue moon. And when I try it, I'm going and knowing what it is. And I'll just have fun with it. Whatever. Don't take it serious. But anyone looking for serious online racing where you're going to run leagues and all this stuff, good luck to you. Uh, I hope that you don't have ulcers because it is frustrating. And I don't blame DMR because if you put cautions, you're going to have problems too. Because every, every lap there's a caution. You, and then what? You're never going to really race. And that's just what happened in all the past games. So you're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. I do think that there is a, a solution that I think most people are not going to like. But if you really want long competitive online racing, maybe consider putting in a ghost mode where you're racing as many people as you want, but you don't make physical contact with each other, you're really racing the track. So actually the, the most talented drivers will finish up front and the guys who just aren't that good, they won't be as good and they, you know, they'll finish in the back, but you won't have people wrecking each other. And if somebody does spin out or wreck, they're on their own. Um, and then I also think that it'll weed out the trolls. People who come just to wreck people and, and, and have fun at your expense and troll you, they can't troll you because every car is ghosted. I know a lot of people are not going to like this idea, but it's just something I think should be an option. So if you really want to race and you're in a room with 30 people, 40 people, if you ever get 40, you can put it on ghost and then just say, hey, 40 people, well, let's see who's the best. You know, it's not realistic, but seriously think about it. Do you really think that it's possible to get that many people in, a, in an online race and it's not going to be a fucking mess? I don't think so. So that's, that's what I think of the online. And honestly, I really got to give DMR the benefit of the doubt. They delivered what they promised, as far as I'm concerned. I'm not saying there's no issue. There are issues, and there are things they can do. And as I suggested, maybe put a ghost feature in there. If people want to run a ghost lobby, and nobody could actually make physical contact with each other, maybe you have fun doing that. I don't, you know, I'd like to try that myself. But that's what I think of the online. So I have to kind of put that on the positive side, to be honest with you. They did what they promised, and they can't control the the, the the wreck fest and the way people race. That's the nature of online racing. It's just the way it is, and it's one of the reasons I've never gotten into it. So I would say that graphics, AI, and online, thats these are the good things about this game. Okay? So that's another one. Unfortunately, I think that's where the good stuff ends. Now we're going to talk about some some of the negative aspects of this game. And uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the sound. The sound is atrocious. I can't believe there's still... The game still sounds like a game from 15 years ago. I can't believe it. But seriously, you can't... You can't get a better recording. It's, it's 2016. We're in the next-gen console era. Anybody will tell you how important sound is, especially to a NASCAR game. If you go to a live race, anybody who goes to a live race will tell you one of the things you walk away from that you that you remember vividly is how loud there's a distinct sound these cars make. And you'll never forget it. And it's exciting. And... and the fact that we don't have that and have never really had that in any NASCAR game is astounding to me. 
I don't understand why they can't get a proper recording of the way these cars sound. They're awful, and the, the sound in this game sounds like it came directly from the original NASCAR Heat. I don't get it. Did they actually put any time into it, or did they just use an old sound file? I don't know how these things work, but the sound is atrocious. And if I had to rate this sound, it is a zero. It is awful. I, I don't get it. It's 2016. So, that's all I'm going to say about the sound. There's nothing good I could say about it. It is what it is. Again, now let's talk about the AI. I said a lot of good things about the AI. And now I'm going to talk about the negative things. And some of it I already mentioned. These cars are tanks. You can't do anything to them. You could smash into them from behind and you're not moving them. No bump and run into the corners. So it's hard to pass these guys with using that classic technique just tap them in the rear and then get them to move and then make your move you almost have to do most of your passing in this game from the outside so it takes options away from you and it makes the game less realistic than it already is so you have those issues you have an over aggressive AI at times sometimes they do things that it's like what the fuck if you're next to them on the inside or outside, sometimes they'll just slam into you suddenly. And if it's on simulator, you're fucked. If it's on arcade, you could kind of hold your ground. So, that's that. And the, the other issue is, this is almost the opposite of what it does well. The adaptive AI works really well and in career mode I'm having such a good time as far as the the racing like I said in in arcade mode and then having the the AI as difficult as it is and I'm fighting and I'm fighting for 25th at a lot of tracks and long runs and it's just we're going back and forth I might pass a car he'll pass me two laps later then I pass him again really fighting tooth and nail for every lap and if you lose focus on one turn you're gonna lose a couple of spots it's good but as good as it works on that end there is actually rubber banding if you go down a lap or you fall way behind the entire field slows down sometimes it almost looks like they are under caution that's how slow the entire field gets and if you go down a lap don't worry because they'll slow down and you'll actually be able to lap the entire field and get your lap back and then the car then they start speeding up again why in the world would they implement a rubber band feature is beyond me I hate it they need to get rid of it it sucks even on a restricted play track you fall way behind and you have no draft help don't worry you still catch up so rubber bending is an issue the the uh, absolute rigidness of the AI they're like tanks you can't move them and the sometimes over aggressiveness or where the the lack of awareness they'll ram into you from behind if you slow down as if you're not there they need to improve that okay so that's that with the AI there's some really good stuff about the AI like I said it's the best AI of any console ever as far as NASCAR games but at the same time they have big issues that need attention so as good as the AI is, there are big issues. So, moving on to, let's see, the fact that there's no cautions, or the cautions are broken. So, that kills 
even when you're having a nice long green flag run and you're having a good time if if you spin out or if you or if you another car spins out or if if the AI wrecks no caution um there's almost I've done very little pitting I'm not really 100% sure how good the pitting is or isn't I just haven't found many situations to pit the other thing is there's no tire model the thing they bragged about how there was going to be tire wear and you had to manage the tires bullshit they either never put it in and lied or it just doesn't work at all I seriously r ran an entire green flag run and I actually ran some of my fastest laps towards the end of the run at Atlanta and anybody knows that Atlanta eats up tires you lose over a second a lap after eight or ten laps at that track and there's a lot of tracks like that and that that brings up the other thing first of all the, there's no tire model no cautions and the tracks are all super smooth perfectly flat almost like flat smoothed out concrete there's no feeling of there's no bumps no grooves no cracks none of those characteristics that you know are there from one track to the next you know that going down into Poconos turn one there's there's a bump how about the tunnel turn all of these tracks have characteristics physical characteristics that you feel behind the car and all of these tracks have none of it that's because they didn't use laser scan scanning and they they just took pictures of all the tracks and rendered them visually but they have no character so you don't feel these tracks they're not none there are no unique tracks other than the way they're configured and where the turns are and the degree of the banking there's no actual feel from the actual surface of the track so no laser scan none of that so that's something that's sorely lacking in this game so you got those tracks they all feel the same um now we're, I'm gonna tell you right now in spite of all these negatives that I'm bringing up these things are fixable they're perfectly fixable so as bad as they are they you know I can see them being fixed don't think they're all gonna be fixed in this game I don't believe you can do as much with patches as other people believe they're not magic you can fix certain things in games but you're not gonna restructure major aspects of a game through a patch so these are things that are gonna have to wait for the next game but I'm gonna tell you right now and this is very important I'm going to tell you why this game has failed as much as it's failed. And it's the same reason every NASCAR game has failed in the past 10 years. It's the lack of content and presentation. This is why I saved this for last. Because this is by far this, the worst aspect of this game and the thing that pisses me off the most I could live with a lot of these things like I said once I put this game in arcade uh, mode I found a lot of enjoyment out of it and once you let go of that idea of super super realism the game is fun and challenging but the presentation in this game is non-existent you have basically witnessed all the presentation before this game came out the main presentation in this game is 
the pre-race where they show the track and they, you know, you, you go down pit road and it's, that's it. There's nothing after that. They don't go down the lineup as you're going down the warm-up lap, telling you where you start and where everyone's starting. They don't talk about anything pre-race. Uh, there's, there's just nothing happening. The menus in this game are all just minimalist, text-based. Everything that happens in this game as you progress is text. It's just you got to read on the screen. Somebody's talking to you. Oh, congratulations. But nothing happens. The presentation, the lack of content. There is no sense of accomplishment. That is what is the worst part of this game. You win a race, nothing happens. There's no burnout. There's no pit road celebration. They gave you a customizable character and they do nothing with it. What's the point of creating a character when all they do is lean up against the car? during the menu screen that's it they don't pick their nose they don't scratch themselves in, in the scrotum they don't do anything they just stand there leaning up against the car like this that's it I was looking forward I thought maybe they would this would lead to something maybe you'd see them celebrating in on victory lane Maybe you'd see them in the shop, you know, when you're in the career mode and you're, and you're doing your progression through your career. Maybe there was some interaction. No cutscenes, no presentation. Nothing happens and there is no reward. And this is basic 101 in game development. Every game has a progression there are challenges and things that, uh, how should I put this? You have tasks to complete in sports games, especially, and nothing happens. You win a race, you see a quick flash of a trophy, it tells you you win, congratulations in text, that's it, you go to the next race. There's no audio, there's nobody talking about it, there's no cutscenes. Your manager is a photograph of a guy doing this. He's got this douchebag smirk on his face. The same picture, the entire game. And then it says, congratulations, uh, new sponsorship. He doesn't say it to you, there's no moving, there's no cutscene, nothing, it's a photo. This is what I expect to see in a game from the PlayStation 2. And even those games back then had cutscenes. As hard, as bad as those graphics were, you had cutscenes, things happened. Nothing here. And I'm telling you now, this is the worst thing in the game. There's no content. Do you know that this game, on the disc it showed in the back, 15 gigabytes. But people are saying that this game is 8 gigabytes in total. Now, whether it's 15 or 8, that is the ultimate proof of no content. 15 gigabytes is nothing. This game is unfinished. It is completely... It's a skeleton of a game. It's got the framework. And you could see some potential but nothing is fleshed out it's almost like the first day when they sat there at a meeting and they said okay this is the structure of the game and then you would go up on the drawing board and you write we're gonna have this 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 and that this is we're gonna have a menu we're gonna have a career progression and you're gonna have to build a shop expand it you're gonna have to do this and the way that it was drawn up, 
in the initial stages, they just left it that way. And that's the way it just ended up on the final game. I, f I can't believe how awful the menus are so plain. There's nothing to let you feel a sense of accomplishment. And when you take that out of any game, it, it, it just kills it. Even non-sports games have sense a sense of accomplishment. If you're playing a, a, a role-playing game or action-based game, you go through the story. The story progresses. Every time you pass a level or an, a, complete an objective, there's cutscenes. The story progresses. You get to see what's happening. And you look forward to the next to completing the next objective so you could see where the story leads. Every game, whether it's sports, whether it's a different type of genre, has a beginning to end storyline. Career mode, you start at the bottom, you create your own character, you want to see the, the way this character grows in the game. And you want to feel like you were immersed in this world the same type of immersion and presentation you see in baseball, football, and basketball, hockey, any other sports game. It's completely non-existent here. Play any NBA 2K game, whether it's this year's or the year before or the year before that. It is, it's loaded with content. The the, what happens off the court is just as important as what happens on the court. The, the career mode in those games and Madden football and, and, and MLB the show, the baseball games, they're loaded with content. You start in the minor leagues. You create a character. You create everything from his batting stance, left-handed, right-handed, the position he plays. Then you got to work your way up from the minor leagues. You have to complete objectives. You don't just go overnight into the major leagues. You got to invest time into the game. You get pulled into it. And when you finally graduate to the majors, when you finally get called up, you feel a sense of accomplishment. It's what keeps you playing the game. There's no sense of accomplishment here. You win a race, it's you off to the next race. There's no celebrations, there's no cutscenes, there's no interaction with you and your manager. It's a photo of this guy, and the guy looks like, literally, an employee of Eutechnics, or, or look at that, I said Eutechnics, that, that, that can't be a mistake. A, an employee of DMR, maybe they caught him on his lunch break, and he's like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in this. I don't want my face in this game, so he does this. And that's your manager. And every interaction in this game is a text message. It's text. You just got to read it. Like you're back in the 90s era of video games. PS1 era. And it's 2016. And this is what you're giving us. And it shows a lack of commitment. And it's awful. And for me, that's the worst part. This is why career mode is such a failure, because it's empty. You made the frame, and there's potential there. Certain things work well. The AI, when it as it, as it adapts to you, and as you start off at the bottom, it's difficult just to get a top 30 or a top 25, and you're fighting. And it takes time, and you slowly but surely you see the car improve. And the racing is fun. And in that sense of the game, it works. Could you imagine if they had fully fleshed this out with presentation? Like I'm talking about. Presentation like you see in all these other sports games. This game would be awesome. And that's why I say there's potential. But you did none of that. This is 15 gigabytes. And, and it's tiny. That's why... The loading, which I forgot to mention before, I love how fast this game loads. You go in from one thing to the next, and there's virtually not much waiting time at all. But this is why 
the game load so fast. There's no content. There's no content. This game is basically all the tracks that were rendered and a couple of menus, menu, uh, simple menu, menu screens. So by rights, it should load fast. There's no excuse for this thing not to load quickly because there's no content. <sighs> so the presentation is non-existent. This game is so devoid of any of that. There's no content. And the other thing that, oh my god, I can't believe it. No statistics. How do you develop a sports game with no statistics? These are the things that piss me off. The other technical uh, problems in the game are fixable. And I can work around it. I can live with it. And in time, it can be fixed. You can't fix no content, no presentation, no statistics. How the fuck do you develop a sports game with no stats? Could you imagine any of these other sports titles with, and you took the stats out? You just play, you win, you go on to the next game. But no statistics for, you, for your character that you created? Your career. How can you say you have a career when there's no stats? You can't look back to how many races you've won, how many top fives, tens, how many laps you've, you've run, how many laps you've led, how many DNFs. There's a lot of stats that you could implement and that we've seen 10 years ago. We used to see statistics in NASCAR games. But you technics, oddly enough, never bothered to put stats in the game. And now, I thought those days were over. I said, there's no fucking way these guys are going to... I want to see... I looked forward to... I want to see how they handle the stats. No fucking stats. And how an entire company and uh, all these people developing this game and nobody thought maybe we should... You know, where are we going to put the stats? How are we going to set up a stats page? You know, it's a career mode. I'm sure people want to keep track of their stats. Nothing. This angers me more than anything else. The lack of content, the lack of presentation, no statistics. That ruins the career mode and it ruins this game. And this is where I really lost it with those, that aspect of the game. And those things are so important. And this is the fatal flaw of this particular game. And it was the flaw in the Eutechnics games. No paint booth, but they gave us challenges. I know a lot of you ask for challenges. I couldn't care less about challenges. You do a challenge and you beat it and you never do it again. How many of you actually do the same challenge again and again after you beat it? Nobody does that. You beat it, you move on. So now that's content in the game that is you do it once, you never do it again. That's meaningless. I don't give a fuck about challenges. Don't give me challenges. Give me content give me presentation give me a feeling of accomplishment this game has none of that so what you beat some challenges and you move on you never do them again nobody nobody does challenges again after you beat it stop asking for these challenges and of all things that we've been asking for they decide let's give them challenges I couldn't care less if they never put another challenge in these games. That's not what these games should be focused on. They should be focused first and foremost on a career mode. Fully fleshed out, deep, immersive, full of content, full of presentation. <sighs> My score for this game is 5 out of 10. Because the only thing 
that I can judge this game in the current state that it's in. It's unfinished. It should not have been released. That, that's uh, I'm going to talk about D DMR in, in a second. But in the state that they released it in, 5 out of 10, and I'm being kind. It's mediocre as an overall product because there's no content. It's it's not even a full game. It's a demo. It's a glorified demo. And the, the, the enjoyment I did get out of the game, and I'm still going to play this game because now that I know under certain conditions I can have fun, but I'm going to have to take this game on a race-by-race -race basis and race it in arcade. Maybe if they fix the simulator and the cautions and stuff like that, I'll give that another shot. But I'm having a really good time in arcade and just running races. But no sense of accomplishment, no presentation, no statistics. What's the fucking point? It's a shame because there is potential in this game and I see it. And I hope a lot of you guys do see there's potential, but unfortunately, I totally understand why people are saying this game is horrible. <sighs> 5 out of 10 is mediocre. It's not even that good. But that's my overall judgment on this game. Unfortunately, as it is, 5 out of 10. And now I'm going to talk about DMR as a company. A first impression... You only get one. And unfortunately, they made so many bad decisions that the first impression they gave us is terrible. And people are looking at them in the same way that we looked at uh, Utechnics. That's not good. And it's going to be very difficult for them to undo it. A bad first impression is very hard to turn around. And I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's just their first game. What they always did with Utechnics. Just their first game. They're a small company. Uh, they didn't have enough time. This, that, whatever. At the end of the day, they made a conscious decision to release an unfinished game full of issues. Which, is, it's, there's red flags everywhere. Apparently, they did not test, put this game through quality testing, or at least enough of it. Because most people see all the issues of this game the first couple of hours they play it. So how much testing did you do? You're telling me that you thought this was acceptable to release for $60? No less? Man, you messed up. Big time. Because now people feel ripped off. And rightfully so. You promised realistic feel to these cars. This game is horribly optimized. The controls. I use a wheel. Like I said, I try to get into as much immersion as possible. So I only race in cockpit mode and I use a wheel. I don't use, I don't use a hand controller. And let me tell you something. There is no perfect setting for the wheel. You, it's either too sensitive or not sensitive enough. If it's too sensitive, you end up where you can't keep the car straight. And if they, the AI taps you, you you're, you're fighting it. So you're wreck, you'll spin out, or you'll just you'll be wobbling like crazy. Then if you put it to less sensitive, it's not sensitive enough. You got to put too much crank into the wheel to get it to do what you want. That's not good either. There's no perfect setting. There's too much of a gap with the settings. So the wheel never feels right. The feedback in this game is not good at all. The fact that there's no character to the tracks because they weren't laser scanned. So you get no feedback from that. The only feedback you get on this wheel is when the, you make contact with the AI or the wall. Or the, when it tenses up on a turn. That's it. So... It's been horribly optimized for controllers. 
whether it's a hand controller or a wheel, so it's bad enough that you can't have a good feel for the for the for the car. Then on simulator, it it just exacerbates the problem, and that's why people have a hard time with this game the way it feels and and the physics and the handling. So part of the problem is that it wasn't optimized right for wheels or the hand controller. So it's never fully comfortable for anybody. So that that's going to hurt you. In a driving game, you got to feel perfectly like you've got control of this game. The physics and handling should be difficult for other reasons because tire fall off, which is non-existent. So you release this game after promising realistic handling, realistic physics, realistic tire fall off, none of which are true. No presentation at all. This game is not fleshed out, it's unfinished. And you released it this way and charged people 60 bucks. No paint booth at all. And you want to charge people for DLC, which is really skins. That's all these are. These paints, uh, schemes are skins. The Darlington retro paint scheme which is going to be the most popular one because they have the best schemes you want to charge people ten dollars for a, a darlington pack that you only see at darlington ten dollars for that after putting no paint booth in the game terrible decision terrible decision now i'm going to tell you dmr had other options they didn't one they could have delayed this game Game developers delay games all the time. They didn't have to release it when they did. They could have delayed this game. And personally, if I was in charge, I would have delayed this game at least till the Daytona 500. It would have given you, next year, February, would have given you another six months of game development time that you could have focused on fixing all the issues, testing it. It's apparent to me this game did not undergo much testing at all testing fixing the issues most of the issues and adding some content and presentation to the game and if you gotta hire a handful of people in addition to the ones you have just to focus on presentation and cutscenes and all the stuff interactive stuff then that's part of game development you might have to invest more money than you thought. But you can't release an unfinished game. You can't do that and then charge $60. That's the fatal mistake you made. And now you got to live with that. And you're going to get destroyed and bashed by everyone. And rightfully so. I don't blame people for, for being as upset as they are. And I'm upset. And I've explained why. But I'm also letting people know, before you throw your game into the garbage or return it, do what I did, play this game in arcade, and get that AI up in difficulty. And I'm telling you, you're going to find moments of really good enjoyment, of actual racing. And they're still not going to be perfect, and they're going to have problems with the cautions and all these other things but you're gonna find that the racing is much better than you thought in arcade mode and honestly I didn't think I would feel that way but I gave it a try I gave this game a week I put more time into it and now I know I can enjoy at least racing individual races with a high difficulty setting in arcade and I'm having a blast doing that but I get nothing else from this game. And it's a shame. I paid I didn't pay sixty dollars for a demo. And that's exactly what I got. So you could have delayed this game or you could have released it for twenty five bucks and thrown in those paint schemes for free and said, Look, we realize that we couldn't give you a paint booth because we didn't have enough time. That's the excuse they gave us from day one. So we're throwing in some free paint schemes. 
you know, as a token of our gratitude to, to the people that went out and bought this game. The game is 25 bucks because there isn't a lot of content, and we acknowledge that. But what we want is for you to buy this game, play the hell out of it, and then tell us what you think of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and tell us what we need to add to the game, what we need to fix, and what we need to take out of the game. For instance, these challenges, they're so unimportant, and you, you, you do it once, and you beat it, and you're done. So the time and effort put into doing these challenges is just not worth it, in my opinion. Focus on the things that are going to keep you coming back for more. So I would have released it for 25 bucks and said, hey, basically, it's a glorified demo. There's not going to be a lot of content, but we want you to play it as it is and help us make this a better game. And I think people would have accepted that. I really think people would have said, you know what, it's just 25 bucks. So we're going to help these guys with feedback and, and constructive criticism. And that would have been a good move on DMR's part. Because it would have shown people, you know what, these guys are not trying to rip people off. They they understand what, what, what it is, and, and they want our feedback. And I think people would have been very receptive to that. I know I would have. But you can't charge $60 for an unfinished, broken mess. And that's my judgment. And so my judgment on DMR... As a company, if I had to actually give them a numbers rating, 2 out of 10, they fucked up big time. They made a lot of bad mistakes, and some of these things they should have known better. They're bad business decisions. Terrible. So I hope you got... This is the longest video I ever made. I'm sorry. It's... But I wanted to touch on all the important aspects of the game. And if you're a diehard NASCAR fan like I am, you would have you'll sit through it, you'll listen to what I got to say, and even if you don't agree with me, you maybe get a different perspective on the game. And maybe, just maybe, I saved you from totally giving up on the game and trying what I tried. And I'm telling you, if you give it a shot under those conditions you're gonna get some enjoyment out of it I'm telling you the AI is really good even with the issues I said so there's silver linings to this game unfortunately the game is just a framework a demo so to speak that's it 5 out of 10 and I'm and it was I was being generous because of the potential. I'm going to do another video. And this video is going to focus on all my ideas on how to fix this franchise. Not fix this game. Because other than patching up some of the issues, there's nothing else you can do. But my idea is for their next game. And I'm going to really try to be articulate. I think I have some really good ideas and fixing really the biggest issues with this game. So I'm going to try to do that video tomorrow. And hopefully you guys didn't get bored to death with this video and you'll sit around for the, for the, uh, my suggestion video to DMR. So I look forward to doing that and I look forward to your comments. So what do you guys think of the game and what do you think about the things I talked about. So, see you guys.